Ladies and gentlemen, before I start this podcast, I'd like to thank all the supporters of the channel. We just passed 400,000 hits. With uh, no monetization and uh, no promotion, is word of mouth that's really working it. And I'm finding that the, that the sports fans on the channel are really enjoying my breakdowns of the NHL drafts. Now, by popular demand, we're going to do something today on what I consider one of the most important NHL drafts ever. Where history and uh, uh, superstars were made in uh, short hours at the Queen Elizabeth Hotel. Now, the 1970 NHL Amateur Draft, held uh, June 7, 1970, included two new expansion teams in the mix, Vancouver and Buffalo. Now, it brought the total number of first-round picks to 14. Now, six of the 14 first-round picks were traded prior to the draft, including all but one of the first-round picks held by the 1967 expansion clubs. Montreal, I'm looking at you. Montreal was making a lot of deals with the original uh, six expansion teams. Not the original six, but I call it original six expansion. Now, the NHL had learned its lesson on how the original six squads were likely to take advantage of more expansion teams, so Vancouver and Buffalo were prohibited from trading their first-round picks. Now, this comes uh, uh, under heavy scrutiny because Jean-Paul Rapport was, uh, was uh, available here, and if you would have traded him to Montreal, NHL history would have changed completely. The draft was also notable because it saw the league play, pay a much greater amount of money to the CAHA in order to secure the rights to players, an acknowledgement that the league truly was dependent on major junior hockey now that it no longer sponsored individual junior teams. So, how it worked back in the day, ladies and gentlemen, each of the original six teams had their own junior A, uh, junior a or sometimes junior B sides, and you would assign them or draft them as early as 12 years of age, uh, looking at you, Chico Rush, Montreal Canadiens, to like offer sheets. Now, the players eligible to draft were born between December 28, 49, uh, and December 31st, 1950. Expansion Buffalo and Vancouver made the first two picks, with Buffalo winning a Wheel of Fortune uh, spin for the first pick on June 9th, 1970. Of course, the punch in lack led Buffalo Sabres won. The rest of the teams drafted in reverse order of their 1969-70 finish. Now, the NHL prohibited the Buffalo and Vancouver franchises from trading first picks and insisted that after signing the players, these teams could not trade them for at least three years. There was no set number of rounds. Teams had a right to pass in any round, and the draft concluded that all squads were done selecting. Vancouver selected an eligible player in the eighth round, not realizing the player's correct age. Now, the rotation included Buffalo, Vancouver, LA, Philadelphia, Oakland, Minnesota, Pittsburgh, Toronto, St. Louis, Montreal. Montreal didn't make the playoffs, of course, and that's why they were not high up or low up. Uh, New York, Detroit, Boston, Chicago. Total rounds were 13. Now, each of the drafted players cost an outright fee of $3,000. Teams would pay an additional $3,000 for each player who signed a pro contract for the 71 season. Teams would pay another $4,000 for each player who appeared in the NHL game due to, during the 71 season. As a result, the players who jumped right to the NHL in 7071 cost a total of $10,000. Teams did not compensate individual junior franchises for their players. Instead, the league continued the process of paying all draft-related money to the CAHA in order to support major junior hockey as a whole. The CAHA was technically responsible for making sure that amateur teams received more money if they were producing more draft picks. Now, the team could offer a player contract at any time to the player after the draft. Of course, the number one was future Hall of Famer and Team Summit 72 player, Gilbert Perot. 62 players drafted made the NHL, while 12 won the Stanley Cup. Perot, of course, led with the most games, 1,191. Most playoff games was by battling Billy Smith, 132. Highest pick to miss was Ray Martinuk of uh, Montreal. Lowest pick to reach were number 111 and Mike Lappin, who was a big player with uh, the Capitals later on. Now, the players drafted included 115, 66 forwards, 36 defenders, 12 goalies, and one unavailable player. Now, let's let's break down very quickly uh, what exactly uh, were the key players in this draft. And there's uh, some amazing uh, there's amazing players in this draft. Now, the 
Financial Amateur Draft, I think it was one of the deepest in modern history. And what was ironic here, the duo, duo of Reggie Leach and Rick McClish were drafted by Boston and ended up both with the Flyers. But uh, this is a who's who of players of the 1970s. Just bear with me for a second. The first round, Gilbert Perrault, Dale Talon, Reggie Leach, Rick McClish, Ray Martignac, Chuck Lefley, Greg Polis, Daryl Sittler, Ron Plum, Chris Arvison, Norm Graton, Serge Lajeunesse, Bobby Stewart, and Dan Maloney. Second round, uh, some top players too. You had Butch, Butch Deadmarsh, Buster Harvey, Bill Clement, Pete Lafamboise, Fred Barrett, John Stewart, Errol Thompson, Al McDonough, Mike Murphy, uh, Bob Guido, Don, uh, Dan Bouchard. Third round, again, some top players. Bob Kelly, Randy Rhoda, Jerry O'Flaherty, Yvonne Lambert, and Len Frigg. Round four, again, some talented minor league and NHL players. Uh, Jacques, uh, uh, Jacques Lapierre, uh, Philadelphia defenseman, not Jacques Perrier, Bobby Grip, Gordy Brooks, uh, Gord Davies. Uh, round five, uh, again, uh, some some good Jean Melash by Chicago at uh, number 70 that was the think of the steal of the draft uh, and as the, uh, the, the the picks continued what was kind of bizarre ladies and gentlemen is that the the in, 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 in eligible player that Vancouver uh, took was uh, it was unfortunate but you gotta check those uh, draft cards now this player in question was somebody by the name of Jerry Kemp now, Jerry Kemp uh, was selected from Clarkson of the ECAC. He had played one game in the OHA, but at the time, he was the C ECAC sophomore year in 1970. He was born June 22, 1949. He led Clarkson goals with 26 uh, and uh, points with 57 and 70-71. Now, his name was called at the 70 draft, but within weeks it was discovered as an ineligible because it was a year older than the Canucks had thought. Although he was originally reported as part of the draft class, his name was removed from league records prior to the start of the 71 season because he was a college player, and as you know, not too many American collegiate players were picked at the time. He never made it to the NHL. He eventually moved to upstate New York after his retirement and went into the sporting goods business, founding Kemp Sporting Goods, also known as Jerry Kemp Sports and Kemp's Hockey Supply Company in Latham, New York. He operated uh, owned and operated a store for a number of years. Now, he did sign with Boston as an unstricted free agent prior to 73 season, uh, and uh, he did earn a spot on the Bruins out of rookie camp, but never made it to the NHL. Unfortunate, very talented player. Had 27 goals for Clarkson in 72, and uh, he left Clarkson in 1972 with a school record for career goals, 88, which is a record that uh, uh, since uh, has uh, since been broken. So, I mean, uh, they should have uh, uh, informed uh, people a little bit better, but it just uh, it just happens uh, the way it is. Oh, by the way, I want to go back to what we talked about about Michael Lampin. It's a very interesting uh, career in hockey. St. Louis took him in the ninth round, 111th overall. He had uh, toiled in the minor leagues for a number of years. Uh, he was a WHL star for quite a number of years. But when Washington claimed him from Vancouver in the NHL expansion draft, that uh, that's what really uh, put him out. Uh, he played again with St. Louis and Vancouver, but uh, with Washington again, he was a he was a hero to many. Uh, had uh, 37 points, including 17 goals in 96 games. Now, he almost died on the ice. He suffered a career-ending head and neck injury when he collided with Andre Dupont along the boards during Washington's December 3rd, 76 game for his Philadelphia. Lampin's fall resulted in abnormal slippage of the 5th and 6th vertebrae, which at the time the Hockey News described as a separation, and the injury required uh, surgery. Now, what was quite interesting, uh, he was drafted for the uh, WHA twice uh, by the uh, Dayton Arrows in the 72 draft, then by the Houston Arrows in the established pro uh, draft in the 73 uh, uh, WHA draft. And he was also the first former Southern, Southern California youth hockey player to be drafted by an NHL team. 
and of course he did well in the exhibition tour um, uh, in Japan in 76 when he had four goals uh, for the Capitals in the team's April 26 Japanese exhibition tour versus Kansas City. Big line with the Capitals here, him, was again um, Harvey Bennett and Hartland Monahan, and he also scored twice in a big win against uh, Detroit on March 30th, 1976. If you ever see the hockey cards of back in the day, that's what he was most well known for because Washington wins were few and far between the first uh, couple of years. Now, WHL was good to him. He had the fastest two goals by one player in six seconds in 1972 at Salt Lake. And he was the WHL player of the week for that November 5th week where he scored those goals. He tied for 5th at WHL with 34 counters. And that season, uh, in only 49 games, he made the WHL All-Star second team with Denver. So, uh, again, a very interesting draft. And like I said, some some hits, some misses, but my God, those top four. And can you imagine if Gilbert Perot's right through trade it, Toronto, Montreal, whatever, Detroit, you know. Ben Jimlack was stupid, but not that stupid. He kept he he kept his uh, he kept his kicker, as we say. And without Gilbert Perot, the Buffalo Sabers would know would have folded years before, ladies and gentlemen. Have a good one. Bye.